why are you giving away so much money in terms of personal and corporate taxes to Revenue Canada each month? Well, by the end of this video, I'm going to share a couple of client case studies to show you how we put plans in place to eliminate the amount of taxes that we're paying to Revenue Canada each month. My name is John Mokler, and I'm the founder of Mokler Wealth Management. And for the best advice in how to protect you and your family, subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when we launch a new video. So often when my team is hired to build a financial and retirement plan, we uncover huge tax savings in terms of personal and corporate taxes. The ownership structure and features on your risk management have to be correct, not only to protect your family, but to make sure you're not throwing money away in terms of getting the coverage in place. Take client number one. They have nine insurance policies in place and seven out of the nine insurance policies either have issues with ownership or features inside of them. Uh, he has two whole life policies and they add up to $129,000 a year in premiums. And so once the premium money is made and the check is signed, the money is gone. And so he had an opportunity during 2020 to invest in a commercial building. And he came to me and said, John, how do I get access to the cash value inside my insurance policies? Well, he signed some paperwork, changed me as agent of record on his insurance policies, and that allowed me to formally request from the insurance companies a printout showing the cash values inside the policies. So on these two whole life policies alone, he was five years into them. He had already handed over $600,000 in premiums and yet there was only $25,000 worth of cash available inside to tap into. Totally designed wrong. He was pissed when I told him this, but I had a solution to put in place for him. The solution required him to walk away from what he was currently doing and invest $125,000 into a brand new whole life policy that would allow him to write the check for 125 k on the Monday, but on the Tuesday, he would have immediate access to $110,000 worth of cash value inside the policy. This allowed him to hit two of his goals. Number one, get coverage to protect him, from in case something happened to him, his family would be protected. And goal number two, the ability to access to cash to purchase additional real estate. So the existing policies he had were really designed for when he was dead, not for while he's alive. And the new policies we put in place were designed for while he's alive and to protect him upon his passing. Too often, I, I see ownership issues and premium issues with existing insurance policies. Take the critical illness that he has on both himself and his spouse. They are term 75 policies with return of premium on death. Now he's had them for five years, he's age 52, but in order to get his money back out of these policies, he either has to wait till age 75, so another 23 years of premium payments, or he has to die, but, but then he's dead. And so with his wife, it was even worse. She's age 40. And so she has another 35 years of premium payments to make in order to get her money back or she would have to die in order to get the money back. And so if you're watching this video now, if you've seen my two videos, one on critical illness insurance, the other one on split dollar critical illness insurance, you'll know there's a key feature missing here. It's called return of premium 15 plus years. And so if he had that feature in place in his premium, then at age 62, another 10 years, so that's the 15 years, at age 62, he would have been able to surrender the policy and get 100% of his money back tax-free or continue making the premium payments. So now there's left some jeopardy now for his wife because she's age 40, she has no employment income coming in, and she's on the hook to continue making those premium payments on the critical illness for the next 35 years. And if she walks away from making those premium payments, she won't get her money back. Again, totally designed wrong. The other issue in this particular client example was that they were making all of their premium payments monthly instead of annually. And by moving the premium payments to an annual payment 
cycle, they would save anywhere from five to 8% on the premiums. And in this particular case, he would be saving $13,400 a year by changing it to an annual premium. And if I hadn't come into his life over the next 15 years, if he continued doing what he was doing, he would have handed an extra $215,000 to the insurance companies and premiums that he didn't need to do because he could afford the annual premiums. And it doesn't matter to us as insurance agents whether you pay monthly or annually. We get the same commission. So you owe it to the client to make sure they understand the savings that they can make by making annual premium payments. Question, you're watching this video now. Do you know for a fact if your existing policies, life, disability, critical illness, long-term care, if they have been designed right, they have the right ownership and the right features? If your answer to the question is, I don't know or no, then you need to click on the link below to apply to become my client and then I can analyze those for you. So back to this client that I was talking about, by changing this over and implementing the right insurance product on his life, it achieved both of his goals to get the protection in case something happened to him. And it also allowed him access to cash so that he could buy additional real estate. Your financial planner owes you a duty to make sure that they do the necessary analysis to put the right protection in place for your family, but it has to be aligned with your goals and not just in case they wanna make like a big commission out of this. They owe that duty to you. Client number two, again, a client with a corporation, and they were looking to purchase rental real estate. So when I came into their lives, the husband and wife, they were taking money out of the corporation because the existing corporation was not allowed to buy this rental real estate. So they were taking money out of the corporation. They were paying 40 cents in taxes on every dollar. So that meant they only got to keep 60 cents on every dollar to purchase this rental real estate. And so I couldn't believe it. And, and so I had to talk to the accountant and say, wait a second, there's another way of doing this. But when I spoke to the accountant, I found out it was actually the accountant that had recommended this structure. So the solution here was to start to interview for a new accountant. So now that we have the right accountant in place, we've set up a holding company which allows us to loan money to that holding company at 99 cents on the dollar to now purchase real estate. So now you have a choice, 99 cents to purchase real estate or 60 cents to purchase real estate. Obviously the 99 cents is the better route. If you'd like to learn more about how you can take advantage of these strategies, click on the link below to apply to become my client or click on the link below to attend my masterclass. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up subscribe to my YouTube channel and share the video with a friend. I wanna thank you for watching and always remember when we develop financial plans for our clients, we always make sure their money outlives them in retirement.